there's one important thing I want to point out about income taxes and and income tax brackets, which which I didn't mention before. So this is your income and this is the tax when you have a tax bracket changed, the tax function looks like this. It has a kink. To the left of this, the marginal rate is lower, and to the right, it's higher. For example, maybe the slope here might be 0 0.28, and the slope here might be 0 0.33. But it's always better with income taxes. This is income tax. It's always better with income tax to get more income rather than less income. For example, suppose you are right at this income level. And the question was, sh uh, suppose your boss offers you a raise of $1. Should you take it? Well, the raise of $1 does uh, move you from the 28% tax bracket to the 33% tax bracket. But what that means is that if you have the $1 in raise, you now have to pay 33 cents of that in taxes. But you got 67 cents left over. And so clearly it's better to accept the offer of a $1 raise even though it's putting you in a higher tax bracket because a tax bracket means the marginal tax rate and so you're paying uh, more taxes on the marginal income on the one extra dollar but it doesn't affect the uh, taxes that you're paying on the previous dollars that you earned. So the incentives are structured correctly so that even though marginal tax brackets go up, it's always better to accept the offer of a raise because you'll always have more money left over after tax even if the raise pushes you into a higher tax bracket. I'm not an expert on US tax policy, but I have found one example of what is essentially US tax policy that's perverse in the sense that having more income actually makes you worse off. And that's the example that I show on the right-hand side of the screen. It's the annual Medicare Part B premium. So what I have in the top graph is on the horizontal axis income. It's actually not strictly income. It's modified adjusted gross income. That, that doesn't really matter. Of course here I, I don't really want to teach anything about taxes. I'm just teaching about marginal and average. So these details aren't particularly important. The numbers that I've written on the graph are actually correct for the year 2014. And or maybe it's 2013. I'm actually not sure which numbers these are. And what you show, what you see is that at an income level of below 85,000, the annual Medicare Part B premium is $1,259. Now what this means is that one, Medicare is the medical program for retired people. So once they retire uh, and start getting Medicare, this is the amount of money that, that they have to pay. But if they make more than $85,000, then they actually have to pay more money. And you can see in the top graph that it doesn't go up gradually, it goes up discreetly. There's a jump. So if you make one penny less than $85,000, your annual premium is $12.59, but if you make, make one penny more than $85,000, your annual premium is $17.63, which means that if a retiree were to contemplate, should I make $85,000 or accept a some kind of maybe investment opportunity to get one more dollar, the answer would be you definitely don't want to accept the investment opportunity to make one more dollar because you have a discrete change in the annual Medicare Part B premium, which would mean that your after-tax income was lower than it was before. Now I'm going to call this a tax. It's not strictly speaking a tax, but it functions just like a tax. So let's, uh, let's see what average and marginal looks like. Let me start with marginal. Marginal is the slope of the line. Between 0 and 85,000, marginal 
the, the line is horizontal, and so the slope, you know, the, the tangent lines look like this, and so the marginal is zero. Between 85,000 and 107,000, you have a horizontal line, so if you draw the tangent lines, again, you get a zero slope, and so marginal zero. Between 107,000 and 160,000, you have a horizontal line, so the tangent line is flat, and so the marginal is zero. Now, I'm not going to do anything beyond 160,000. I, I did show you there are a couple more steps to this, but I'm not going to do the details around there. What about right at 85,000? Well, right at 85,000, a mathematician would say the function is not differentiable. So there actually is no uh, marginal. Um, another way of thinking about it, you could think, well, it jumps from this value to this value, and so the line is vertical, and a vertical line would have a vertical tangent, and so you could think of the marginal as being infinity there. Um, so it's possible to to think about the marginal jumping up to infinity at these particular points. That kind of detail, it's uh, I'm not gonna I'm not gonna expect you to do anything like this in an exam, so you don't have to worry about that. So this th this marginal graph looks fairly weird. How about the average? Okay, we'll start at zero. Draw a line from the function value to the origin, and ask the slope of that line. The slope of that line is infinity. So the average starts out at infinity. Then let's say at this income level, you have a slope of this line. At this income level, you have a slope of this line. At 85,000, you have a slope of this line. So the average is falling because the slopes of those orange lines are falling as you go from left to right. And I actually calculated right at 85,000, the slope is 1259 divided by 85,000, which is 1.5. That's here. So the average starts out at infinity, and it goes to 1.5. Just above 85,000, you're here at 1763, and so you have the slope of this line. Well, the rise is 1763, the run is 85,000, and it turned that out that that's 2.1, which is here. And you keep on going, let's say, to this income level, the slope of this line, this income level, and the slope of this line, so it's, those lines are getting flatter, so it's falling. It ends up at 107,000, which is at this point, and the slope of a line from the origin to that point, well, the rise is, is 1763 and the run is 107, and it turns out that that's equal to 1.2. So the marginal goes down like that. And I don't know whether it's a straight line or, or, or whether it's like this or whether it's like this. Uh, I, I don't know what the... What the what the shape is, but I just know that it's going down. And then uh, right at 107, you're up here, and so you calculate the slope from the origin to there. Well, the rise is 25.18, the run is 107. So that turns out to be 2.4. And then you can see the pattern that as you go to income levels like this, and this, and this, you have lines like this, and this, and this, they go down again, and so forth, and I'm not going to draw the rest of the graph. But um, but that's what the marginal does. Marginal, marginal, I'm, I'm, I'm sorry, that's what the average does. Let me uh, do it this way, that's what the average does. The marginal, the marginal's down here, at zero, except for those weird points where uh, where it's equal to infinity. So this is an example of actually a a very bad structure. It's a structure that uh, discourages people who are near these breakpoints from increasing their income because their after-tax income would be less than if they didn't do it. So 
if they had labor opportunities, and most of these people are retired, but I suppose not everybody's retired. So if they have labor opportunities, there are clear disincentives for work if you're somewhere just below 85,000, just below 107,000, just below 160,000, and so forth. But again, these are old people. And so something like only, I believe it's 5% of Medicare recipients have incomes above 85,000 and therefore are subject to these higher premiums.